I don't really feel like I needed a tight end in the first round, but it's Brock Bowers. I got, I've got to take him because he's 15. And I thought he was going to go top 10. That, yeah, that exactly. What would you yeah, do and- as a GM? Where would you go? Um, see, I would, I think I'd always end up being quite aggressive. Cool. Um, and I'd always be looking to trade. I'd always be looking to make those kind of impact players. The, the, the luxury is where you think, okay, well, it can be, it can be one of two ways. It can be luxury because you've got all, all your kind of plays, players already kind of filled on your roster and you're building strength mm. or it's like, we need loads of players. We need anybody. Yeah. And there are quite, and, a and then being able to go, need, do you need a yeah. lot of, a lot of holes? Yeah. Through. I'm just thinking about the NC show crew. <laughs> and their styles of, of war room. Carlson would definitely just be consistently tr- tr- dealing down and just trying to ac- ac- accumulate as many six and seventh round. Yes. You could like, yes. 54, like try and break the record and just be, uh, just be going proper Belichick in deep dive. Propo, I think would m- make rash, rash decisions fueled by alcohol and would probably dr- like he would trade up big and make a ridiculous pick on a whim on a whim just uh that's my that's what i want to do says propo you'd be quite aggressive like you would definitely you know if you were the broncos or the the giants and the raiders in this draft i think you might be making a move into a top quarterback or a top spot for a quarterback i could see you being quite aggressive yep. where would i say i guess i'd be I think I would be like Mike Mayock. No, I, think I, would be, <laughs> I reckon I would be, I don't care what the draft Knicks say. I don't care what all the sharps say. I'm just going to go with my gut. And if I want to take, if I want to take a kick around one, God damn it, I will. <laughs> I mean, I, I think my style would definitely be, I'm looking to trade up, but I'm looking to always, it might be, I'm trading up by one. Mm. And I, I, at the, at the start of the draft, it's like, okay, well, here are the numbers I'm picking at. And then by the end of the draft, you realize I haven't picked at any of those numbers, mm. that everything is just gone all over the place. I'll have particular <laughs> yeah, players. Yeah, it's yeah. like, those are the guys I want. You'd be super I'm gonna prepared. i those moves. I love, yeah, you'd be quite analytical with it. Of course you would, Ben. I would definitely be, actually, much like Costner in draft day, I'm going, I'm going Vontae Mack. I'm going character first. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's my draft strategy. Yeah. <laughs> character first. Forget the draft Knicks. I don't care if he should have gone 27. I'm taking him one. I'm he's taking a good him guy. one. He's it's, a good it's, guy. It's it's what the I mean. um the it's a bit it's a bit like this the story I've brought up before. And I don't I mean, I'm I'm sure that the story is true, which is whether how much it played into the decision, but the story that the 49ers in part picked Alex Smith over Aaron Rodgers because they were impressed by the way that Alex Smith opened the car door for his mum to get out. Yeah. When they had when they had dinner with the team, and the Aaron Rodgers didn't because they didn't turn up in a car together. But they but really came... loved that Alex Smith did this. Aaron Rodgers rocked up in a motorbike cab. I bet. Um, the this came up in the Carlson episode in the vault, as I say. This unnamed scout that NFL.com reported, AFC scout, was saying that uh, Jane Daniels is more of a football guy than Caleb Williams. This the same shit <laughs> that we heard about Trevor Lawrence. I'm not sure. Yeah. Whether he likes how how committed he is to football, are you are you are you kidding me? Is this still a thing in twenty twenty four? Yeah, and but like there will there will be certain people who feel like that. But yeah, it's always some unnamed random person. That's it's, what I'm gonna have. I bet I'm gonna have like old school scout warum. I'm gonna have guys that I'm, would. I'm gonna have guys that were that were scouting for Don Shula <laughs> in my God, in know, my crew. Now, here's something that will blow people's minds. In the days of like Don Shula, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the scouts would work for multiple teams. So they would be like yeah, a they, they would be like a team of scouts, like like freelancers. Yeah. And they'd be they'd be giving the information to multiple teams. Like what it was is like the... the time when I did I did a show on Talk Sport and then went over to five live and didn't have <laughs> show the, the same day literally yeah. went from one station to its rival and somehow got away with that yeah. uh i don't know I, well I, I could i can i can announce that now nobody knows i mean if, if if i was one of those scouts i would be if like you might not have a flat fee it might be like a, one team is paying you x amount yeah and another team is paying you 10 percent more i'm telling them the good player Mm. And I'm telling the I'm telling the cheapskate team the the not so good player be like pick this guy. Do you remember like, the, how can the, you trust them? The COVID draft, the legendary one with you know Belichick's dog and Kingsbury. 
Propo, we get an insight to Propo's war room. Would it just be, would there just be six packs everywhere? Um, bucket <laughs> bongs would, and would Propo's in the same way that I would have like a grizzled vet, like 70 plus would be my, if you're under 70, if you've got less than 44 years experience in the NFL, I'm not interested. Would, <laughs> would Propo just have a bunch of Gen Zers? I think it would look like a student squat as well. <laughs> that would, that's what it would be like. Yeah. Uh, the propster, I, I, he's back soon. We're going to do a post draft reaction with him as well. Betty, by the way, you and I, of course, are doing Friday morning round one. That's going to drop our review, and then uh, we're going to get Propo in next week for some Gen X, Gen Z <laughs> fun, and, and just to get his take on everything off season so far because uh, we haven't heard from the big man for, for quite a while. Right? Okay. So look, enough of this nonsense. Let's get down to business. So, on the basis that um, we recorded your first mark one to ten also in the vault, obviously, about a month ago. Has your top three changed? Well, there's so much There's so much speculation about J.J. McCarthy right now. And the odds makers have slashed his odds of going in the top three, which I had the top three of, you know, shock. Caleb Williams at one, Jaden Daniels going to the Commanders at two, and Drake May going to the Patriots at three. Yeah. And I still, I still stick with that. But I'd be a lot less surprised if J.J. McCarthy got into that top three than I would have been a month ago when I would have been like, no, 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 there's no chance. Now I think there's a chance. I still say yeah. it's that three. And I'm, I'm, I still feel like my top four makes the most sense. Yeah. And... So Daniel's the, the Vegas is saying Daniel, obviously, Caleb Williams is like a gazillion to one on to go number one. That Daniel's is the favorite to go to. Uh and it's between Daniels and May, realistically. But as you say, three is interesting. So May is the favorite, but given the fact that Daniels has to be in that jeopardy as well, McCarthy, interestingly, is 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 an, a, a worth a shot. Worth a shot at three. Do we think that because I was talking about this with Carson, and we didn't really get into this. Well, we did talk about it, but maybe didn't play it out. So I'd love to get your take on this. I think there is a very realistic chance. The Patriots deal three, knowing they're going to get, I don't know, a, a top 15 pick or, or similar, obviously depending on who they deal with. But I know you can have lots of machinations of three team trades and all, all that. That's when it gets really interesting. Oh, but yeah. It, <laughs> that's like they, wife swapping. Taking, taking, uh, dealing down from three, building the collateral and still taking Bo Nix or Penix later on in the first round. I think there's yeah. a very real chance they might do that. Yeah. And it's it's interesting you bring that up in tandem with what you were saying before about kind of like how how the draft room will work as the draft progresses in the players will be assigned a certain value or perhaps even a color they'll be like okay well ones who we think are a top 10 value pick they're on a red card and then if you're picking in the top 10 and you don't have there are no red cards left on your board you may feel Do you know what i'm going to trade down 